Today I'm presenting an encore presentation of the Sci-Fi Flight video. Most of you haven't seen this one. It's been remastered and I hope you enjoy it. Let's do this. I've got some basic boilerplate here. Let's just go over it. We're importing the library here. I'm gonna grab the windows width and height, create a new scene and a new camera, passing in the width and height, set the position of the camera, establish a renderer, I don't need this pocket. And then I'm just adding that renderer to the DOM, the renderer's DOM element rather. I'm just gonna create a square, a plane geometry, give it a, the color purple. This syntax here is the same as doing this. Color colon color is the same as just color. I'm passing that into this basic material and creating a three dot mesh, which represents a 3D object to the scene and adding it to the scene. I'm not actually using this method yet. If I get rid of this and just call renderer.render .render and prove to you that I'm doing something, it's the same thing. However, I like having this animate function that I call here and that it calls itself again and again and again and again using this request animation frame API. All right, so that's the basics of that. What I'd like to do is add a bunch more squares and have us fly through them. Kind of like uh, we're traveling through some abstract landscape. So we've got one square. Let's orient that square so that it's sort of flat as if, as if it were on the ground or above us. And to do that, I'm just going to rotate it. I'm going to say mesh dot rotation dot. It's rotating um, from facing us to flat. So I believe that's along this axis, which is the X axis. Equals 90 divided by math dot pi. Actually, I got that backwards. And the times me at that point. I'm trying to convert degrees, 90 degrees to radians. Side re dot double side. I think that's the syntax. Not sure. I want to tell um, this material to be double sided because by default it's only one sided. That is to say, uh, every 3D object has a, a normal, that is a line that's perpendicular to this, its face. Um, let me use an example of my poem. So the line that's posting up, that indicates that's the top. So the bottom would be invisible. That. All right, there it is. And it looks like it's oriented properly. So I've oriented, uh, let's make it a little bit larger too. I'm going to say width to height is two. I can see a little more clearly. And why don't we add a bunch of those? We could add a bunch like this to use a programming construct called a for leap or let zero start with the initial condition and then a conditional saying repeat until this condition is met. And then a third thing is, is like a, a iterator. It's kind of a strange construct, but one thing I need to do is define num squares. And I'll say that's equal to 30. Save, and you don't see much difference here because every single square is sitting right on top of each other. If instead we set the position, mesh.position.set, um, let's say that z is negative i, so we'll move back into space. And so is y. The y is negative i as well. Now, we, we see them all here. Negative x as well. Uh, negative i for x. Instead, I'd like to have them kind of splayed out in front of us. I'm going to go ahead and define these x, y, and z. First, x was equal to math dot random. Actually, math up floor, math up random. So math up random is going to return a, f oh, a value between zero and one, um, and I want that to be rounded. Around, rounds ten, and then I want to offset that so that it's five in the negative axis and five in the positive axis, and pa pass that into x. Looks like that. Let's do the same for y. And same for Z as well. 
that's interesting. It's not awesome, but it's kind of interesting. And if I save it, it's going to regenerate them again and again. And now let's fly through them. Um, we could move the, the camera in the scene, but I want these to kind of continuously uh, fly at us. So if we just move the camera, we'll just move past them and they'll be gone. What I want to do instead is move them and pass the camera. And once they've gone past the camera, I'm going to move them back in the scene so that they fly at us again. There's a couple of ways to do that. My favorite way to do that is to refactor this for loop so that I'm just calling get square each time. And I'm going to define what get square is. It's a function which includes all of this code. It kind of, uh, it, it wraps the reusable part, the repeated part of the code. And it, it also acts as kind of documentation too. Um, instead of adding a comment, I can just name the function what it's doing. It would be more readable to me in the future or to someone else who comes in to read this code. I'm just going to add this update method and then we'll be done. Let me, let me, let me change this. I want to just return the mesh and then say uh, let square equal get and then scene dot add square kind of like this now it should you shouldn't see any change but now i'm calling this reasonable chunk of code which returns this thing i take that thing and i add it to the scene like that i could also say squares dot push so I'm using a JavaScript array to hold on to that thing I just created. Better define that array. Where's equals. And in JavaScript, to create an empty array, you just use this syntax. You could also say new array. I like this method better. It seems much more direct and clear to me. Shook is squares. Okay. Still no change if I save it, but now I have a reference to every one of those squares. And I can, in, in my animate method, the method that's called as frequently as possible in the browser to update the scene, I can call, I can loop over these squares dot for each. And then in it, for a for each method, you pass in a, a method. Well, hang on a second. Let me, let me explain. Each one of the squares, I'm going to represent squares as S, do this thing, s.update. What I'm saying here is, hey, for all, every, go through this array for each one of them, take, um, take one of those things and then call its update method. If I save this, it's going to break. Because currently, this square doesn't have an update method. It's just a three, three mesh, three JS mesh. Instead, I'll return a JavaScript object with a property called mesh. This, again, this is the same as typing this, it's just a little bit briefer. It also has an update. Update, like that, um, which I haven't defined. Let's define it real quick. It's a function called update. And in it, on this, have nothing happening yet. No operation. Um, and also I need to ch change one thing because I'm trying to add this generic JavaScript object to the 3JS scene and it doesn't like to do that. It's like, dude, I, I, I can't add that because it's not a 3JS object, but it has a property, mesh, which is a 3JS object, and it's happy to do that. And it's happy to, to run update now too. What is update doing? Right now it's doing nothing, but we could have it do something like, for example, rotate the mesh every frame like that. So now we're animating using this update method that's called for each one of the squares, all 30 squares, as often as possible inside of this animation loop. And we can modify the rate of that, make them spin slower. Or what I really want to do is position.z and have them move toward the camera like that. That's it for now. 
Next time, we'll change the color of the squares um, and we'll position them so that they are either above or below the camera, not all through the Y axis. Um, yeah, and then we'll have them reappear back in the scene as they fly back in the camera. So you get this effect that um, kind of like at this, where they just continuously fly at the camera and then reappear in the distance. You can see the code for this here. I'm just saying, if you fly past the camera, because the camera is sitting at, where's the camera? It's sitting at five in the Z axis. If you fly past the camera, then reset your position to the negative limit, which is 81 in this case. And because I'm using this 3JS fog, it's completely faded out at 81 and it slowly fades in. Um, I'm using a filter on here to give it kind of a glowy effect. I can remove that just by removing the compositor. And these will be just plain. And you can still see though, in the real in the far distance here, they're almost invisible and they slowly fade in to give you a really nice infinite effect. Thanks for watching. See you next time.